We're ready. Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Um, so I'm Peter Carr, and uh, this is the um, last Zoom seminar in the Brooklyn Quant Experience seminar series. And um, today uh, we're very pleased to have Igor, Professor Igor Chielenko from Illinois Institute of Technology. Um, Igor got his PhD in applied math from the University of Southern California, after which he joined as a permanent faculty member in the Department of Applied Math at IIT, where he is now. Um, his primary research interests are in math finance, stochastic control, and statistical inference for SPDEs. Uh, currently serves as elected program director for the SIAM Activity Group on Financial Math and Engineering. And I understand you guys are doing some Zoom talks. <laughs> Maybe you can tell us a bit about before you start. Um, he's also managing editor for the International Journal of Theoretical Applied Finance and on editorial boards of several scientific journals, including SIAM Journal on Financial Math and Applied Math Finance. And um, uh, he and I both attended a conference at Stony Brook earlier this year, and unfortunately I missed it and I felt really bad about it, so I invited Igor back, and I originally planned for him to travel to Brooklyn, but of course the coronavirus prevented that, so he's graciously agreed to present via Zoom. So Igor, please take it away. Yes, uh, Peter, thank you very much actually for, um, you know, for, first of all for the invitation, and in fall I was really looking forward to come and see you, yeah. see Andrew, see, see Stefan, uh, but it uh, didn't happen. Still, I'm super excited to give the talk, actually. Yeah. So, uh, thanks uh, for, for, you know, not uh, bailing out on this. Uh, yeah, actually, I can make the reality is... Uh, um, yeah, could someone, um, could, um, everybody should just mute except for Igor. Um, and um, if you want to uh, make a comment during Igor's talk, just go ahead, um, just unmute and make a comment. I think it'd be all right. <laughs> so um, it'd be the easiest thing. Is that all right with you, Igor? Yeah, sure, okay. sure, sure. And uh, I mean, I don't know how you want to run it. Uh, you can interrupt uh, with questions at any time if Peter is- Yeah, I think that's coming. best. If, if you don't mind, that'd be yeah, great. Sure, sure, I mean, it's, uh, we'll try to keep it, uh, you know, uh, less formal, so. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, as, uh, as Peter said, uh, uh, because this discussion on, on the, related to, to the talk I gave to Stony Brook, and I decided to give the same more or less the same talk, although it half of the talk will have actually in some new results that we got quite recently. Oh, and, great. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so in meantime, we've been working actually on this. Uh, I'll talk about adaptive robust uh, control, Sahasi control, of course, with applications to finance. Um, that's a joint work with uh, Tom Belecki and uh, Tao Chen. And um, the... Let me see how I control this. Okay. The motivation actually started some, some good years uh, back with uh, very this question uh, that I'm circling with, uh, right here, uh, the last bullet point. We've been working with a problem on model selection uh, and trying to minimize the hedging error for some models which are coming from, uh, at that time we've been working on credit risk. And we wanted to use uh, what was available at that time and the, the state of the art technology was robust finance. Uh, and when we start working on that, we realize that something very fundamental kind of is missing in the whole Stochastic control uh, theme uh, with model uncertainty. And that was that uh, the, um, the control itself was set up, of course, correctly, and it made sense. But through time, there is no reduction of uncertainty. So the model uncertainty or uncertainty about how the model behaves was not incorporated in all of these uh, classical approaches, which I'll mention today. So um, secondly, we thought that, um, so secondly, if you start implementing the robust uh, framework, the famous robust uh, methodology, you will see that it's quite conservative. And conservative to the point that uh, the problem that I'm gonna discuss today as an application, uh, optimal investment is literally telling, put everything in the banking account. So they are, and, and it's clear why, and I hope that that will be also clear from, uh, from, uh, from what I'll discuss. And eventually, sure, yes, uh, these um, problems in general related to stochastic control with uncertainty, with nation type of uncertainty are important not only to finance, but of course to engineering, to management science, to economics, and you name it. Uh, and uh, you'll see that the problem is formulated quite generically. So that's, that's uh, the motivations of what we, we, we are gonna do. We'll uh, propose a new method, 
that has two keywords. One is adaptive, one is robust, that solve, uh, solves Markovian type uh, control problems subject to nation uncertainty or model uncertainty. Um, we'll apply it to, to portfolio selection problem. So I'll talk only about one of these applications. I'll mention, of course, other applications that are uh, uh, viable to the, within this framework. What is important that we develop actually, the, we develop uh, an algorithm. And when I say an algorithm, we have the theoretical part, which is Bellman, Bellman principle of optimality or dynamic programming principle, but also it, it allows to, to solve this, uh, these problems numerically in feasible time. Uh, given the current uh, technology. <clears throat> so initially we started with classical type problems which are time consistent, so-called time consistent, and, and uh, there is a separate discussion what is time consistent and in, in, uh, in what sense. And uh, more recently, and this is what I was mentioning, we'll also deal with time inconsistent problem and uh, as uh, time inconsistent problem, think uh, mean variance, optimal, uh, optim uh, mean, mean variance type of optimization. Okay, so um, what is um, uh, done uh, with, with uh, regarding this? So we have a couple of papers. Now there are several other papers, uh, not by us, but people are picking up uh, and working on this theory. Uh, I'll focus on the first one. Uh, and as, as I already mentioned, it would be a mean variance portfolio selection problem. But in the framework of uh, adaptive robust, that we introduced uh, in our original paper. Okay, so uh, the talk will be structured uh, quite uh, in the usual way. I'll start with some preliminaries and review the existing methods. And um, I always believe that this is very important to, to, to since this is a completely new uh, framework, you know, to place it uh, appropriately in what is already done in classical methods and compare it at least uh, heuristically with, uh, with uh, where we are. And then uh, I'll formulate as, as precise as I can uh, our uh, problem, <clears throat> our formulation of these uh, uh, problems. And then uh, I'll show the main results, which is uh, uh, DPP for, uh, for this type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, control problems. And uh, eventually I'll cover a simple example, well, simple to the point that it's easy and well understood. Uh, on the other hand, it's uh, uh, not a trivial extension of a typical uh, mean variance uh, uh, one-step criteria, but uh, rather in, uh, in a stochastic uh, framework. All right, so um, let me start with notations next and uh, we'll work when, of course, we'll have a probability space uh, on which everything will be defined. We'll have a time and fine, uh, the finite time horizon. Uh, we'll have uh, everything will be worked in discrete time uh, set up. And uh, the first object that we'll, we'll work on and we'll go through entire talk would be this process Z, which is the, my stochastic driver. So the whole system, the randomness in the system is driven by ZT. So, and it's observed fully observed by, by the controller, by us. Uh, so think about uh, maybe stock log returns or any stochastic factor could be multidimensional, so that's not a problem. Uh, but the randomness is driven by Z. Uh, and uh, the filtration is generated by this process Z. Uh, next, we'll assume that about Z, although it is observed, we will not know precisely what is the parameter uh, that describes or will not exactly know the, the true law of Z, which is denoted by theta star. So the, but rather it's a family of laws. So we have a set of probability laws that describe uh, the distribution of this process Z or describe the behavior of Z uh, in, at each time T. And uh, they are parameterized by a parameter theta. So we take a usual statistical setup where we assume that uh, the set uh, of probability measure is actually the parameterization of the, of the process. Uh, and for now, we are assuming that this is a finite dimensional parameter uh, in RD, but uh, so it's a parametric setup, but it can work also in non-parametric setup and uh, we, we know how to deal with that too. Okay, so uh, now what- so Just a clarifying question. The set of plausible laws contains the true law, is that right? 
That's right, that's right. Yeah. So, and we don't know what is this theta star, but it contains all of this plausible loss. Uh, so for example, mean and variance uh, belonging to some intervals. So that would be one scenario that, uh, that will work. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, you can always take the whole, the set to be the entire RD, but uh, mathematically, I mean, technically speaking, you want to have this set to be at least compact. Uh, uh, at least to be compact to, to avoid any technicalities uh, because else you'll not have the minimum, you'll not have the maximum. So that's the only reason that, that you want. On, on the other hand, you also want to, 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 to have a smaller set else things will blow up. Okay, so the problem is the classical stochastic control problem that we have in mind and uh, that, that everybody usually has, uh, has in mind when talking without model uncertainty. Assuming so we know the parameter, the true parameter, so what kind of problems we're trying to solve. The problems that we're trying to solve are uh, of the form that you have the control, which is a stochastic process phi, so, and uh, A will denote the set of admissible controls, of course adapted uh, to, to, to the flow of information, and X is the controlled process, so X will depend on Z and on phi. Z is the driver, phi is the control, and uh, in our language, the easiest to think is phi is a trading strategy, maybe X is the portfolio value. Uh, and then uh, if we would know the, the, the parameter, then we, we are just taking a loss function, um, any type of loss function, maybe a risk measure, maybe a negative of the utility, uh, and we measure somehow the loss of the entire thing, uh, not necessarily of the terminal value, and that would be a number. And then uh, take expectation, average it out, and minimize or find the best control for which you have the smallest uh, loss on average. So it's info of the expected loss. <clears throat> Application in finance in this general setup, uh, as I said, is portfolio selection problem. That's where it's typically taught in classes, uh, and uh, uh, probably that's the most used, uh, practically speaking, uh, approach. But not only that, uh, sure, uh, optimal liquidation, which is the, 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 the way where optimal control uh, or stochastic control came into the place in the last uh, 15 years or so. Uh, uh, even, even older is pricing and hedging, and in many ways you want to do either uh, through utility or indifference pricing or through minimal error of the hedging, minimum hedging error. All of these are control problems of this form. Uh, contract theory more complicated when you have mean soup uh, and so on. So, uh, and uh, I'm, I, there are many even more problems from finance related to this, but that would be, you know, the, the bullet points where you would find this generic setup. Our you approach- have, Can I have a question, please, Igor? This is Leon. Um, in, the, uh, in the process fee, right? There could be a presumably other sources of risk in the evolution of fee beyond what drives Z, I assume, right? Not, not in our setup, but in principle, yes. So okay. uh, in, in, in our setup, we are assuming that uh, all randomness comes from Z for simplicity, but in principle, uh, you can enlarge this, uh, you know, take a, take a larger space where that, that drives the randomness. Okay. So fee could be sort of like be, let's say, some unknown deterministic function of x of z and t, let's say, for instance. Correct. 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 Okay. Yes. Exactly. 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 So uh, yeah. So uh, and um, right. So uh, in in uh, in the problems, and I'll formulate exactly like you said in in, in a couple of slides precisely. So uh, in um, the problems that we solved initially was the maximizing the expected utility of the terminal wealth. Uh, so this xt is the terminal wealth, phi is the self-financing trading strategy, u is a utility function. So classically, you take soup of the expected utility across all possible uh, self-financing trading strategy, maybe with some constraints. And uh, we initially developed our theory for this type of problems. Not, not, not this problem, a little bit more complicated, adapted to model uncertainty, but that would be one of the problems that we worked out. This is a time consistent, which means it will satisfy nice Bellman type of uh, equations. Uh, what we did lately, we worked on a version of uh, mean, mean variance portfolio selection. So you also maximize, but uh, we, we are maximizing expectation of the terminal wealth minus the, the variance, uh, well, times this uh, risk aversion type of uh, thing, uh, gamma, which is known. Uh, 
mathematically, this is much harder problem to solve dynamically because uh, it's not uh, so-called time consistent. So the decisions or the control you make through time are not uh, remaining the same in, in sense you change your mind as time goes. And Could you explain time, time, explain time consistent, please, what it means? I'm sorry, Igor, the term time consistent. So let's, uh, let's take time, time consistent and time inconsistent for now as something vague, and I'll define it properly and spend time on explaining more what, what this time consistent is. But roughly speaking is that you strong form of time consistency means that I'm deciding, I mean, I'm solving the problem today, which means I know how to behave through the time from today till tomorrow. And depending what happens in time, I'm sticking with my decisions that I, I had at time zero. However, in the time inconsistent problem, what happens, and, and mean variance is one of those, once you, you, you arrive at time one, uh, or next period of time, you solve again the stochastic control problem and you start having different type of behavior and not consistent with what you've been thinking to do one step ahead. And then you have to do something else. Not that uh, there is anything wrong actually philosophically with that. And we wrote uh, with Tom a couple of papers on different form of time consistency and why people should not be scared. But when you try to solve numerically, then if this is not satisfied, then you, you, you are out of luck. And I'll have equations on that, but that would be the description of time consistency and inconsistency issue and why people are spending in fact, uh, lifetime discussion on the on how to solve this. Okay, so um, now what happens with model uncertainty? With the model uncertainty, uh, uh, here is the thing. So if you don't know theta, if this theta over here is not known, how do you incorporate uh, that into, into this stochastic problem? So the way to do, and it may sound very simple, you would uh, most likely, the, the, the direct way, and it's trivial way to do, uh, you say, okay, instead of solving uh, inf over model expectation of the losses that I know, I'll look at worst possible model, which means first I'll take the soup across all possible uh, models, which, which, which means the worst model uh, or the model that pr produces the worst loss on average, and then I'll uh, find the best model. So it's an inf soup problem, and, and again, that means that I'm looking at the best strategy phi across all possible models. And I'm picking, I'm, I'm thinking of the worst case scenario uh, around the models. And uh, this theta is uh, our set that we fixed uh, a priori. And uh, that uh, I think the way I'm explaining makes perfect sense. And uh, well, it's uh, started in the 90s and uh, the so-called min-max uh, approach of Gilbo and Schmeidler and then Hansen and Sargent uh, developed the robust, uh, the keyword now here is robust and this approach is the robust control um, to the point that, uh, well, uh, both Hansen and Sargent picked up a Nobel Prize uh, around this uh, type of problems in economics. So, uh, and, and that's popular. The only thing that intuitively can be already kind of uh, understood that that would be conservative. To, to, to the extent that looking at the worst possible model, that means I'm so risk averse that I'll try to minimize my, my, my losses and pick up the worst possible model across all the times. And translate it if, if we would apply this to uh, portfolio selection that the, the solution would be put everything in the banking account or most of the funds in the banking account. So um, now uh, an, another version is to, to, look at the, um, to look at the Bayesian approach. Bayesian approach is, uh, well, you treat models differently uh, according to a function nu naught, which is the prior. So you put a density on, on all possible models and then you are averaging out across models according to the prior uh, theta naught. That also makes sense. It's a huge literature. So again, when I'm saying that this is classical approach, that means there are hundreds and hundreds of papers and books written. And I, I just uh, uh, added here a couple of classical books. Uh, that also makes sense. And uh, sure, this is the, the formulation of the problem solution would go with priors and conjugate priors and uh, the whole Bayesian, uh, Bayesian uh, setup. Uh, it is adaptive in a sense that once you solve the problem going step to step, as typically happens in a Bayesian approach, you'll update uh, new naught uh, from prior to posterior and 
and you go on and the density of, uh, of this theta naught is changing through time, but the theta, this theta is not changing. The support will remain the same, same as here. In the, the robust approach, this theta is capital theta where the parameter leaves, the set or the uncertainty set remains fixed through time. Now, uh, the adaptive, and, and here the, 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 the word is adaptive, you are adapting information in your parameter, but not in the set, but rather in the parameter itself. And the way you construct, you using the past information, you just make a point estimate. So you build an estimator, uh, uh, theta, call it theta hat, uh, and as time goes, so sample mean, sample variance, or maybe a maximum likelihood estimator, doesn't matter which one. As long as you can compute it, preferably in a recurrent way, then at each time t, you are applying the control that corresponds to the parameter that you learned uh, up to time t. So the time goes on, next step, you learn that the parameter probably is something else. Ideally, of course, theta t hat uh, will converge to theta star, which means you'll be closer and closer to the true parameter. And as time goes, obviously, if the time horizon is, is long, you do better and better and uh, more relevant decisions. Uh, on the short term, that could be quite far from, from the true and you can be you know, off, which means you can have like uh, bad uh, losses. Uh, st strong robust control is a version of robust that uh, I'll show you the picture. So this, roughly speaking, these are the, 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 the big approaches uh, uh, to, to, to stochastic control with model uncertainty. So um, none of them, as I already said, none of them actually talks about uh, reducing the uncertainty uh, about, uh, about the, the parameter, which means this set capital bold theta remains the same uh, through time. And uh, you may concentrate a little bit through Bayesian, may, maybe in the Bayesian approach uh, that uh, the parameter is closer to something. You can approach the parameter in, on the long run in adaptive, in robust, this is treated equally through, through the, the whole time. And we thought it's, you know, this incorporating learning, it makes sense that, that as Can time passes, we learned something about this uncertainty, about uncertainty set. Yeah. And the, yes. I guess the question, so um, like the state of star is uh, known by nature, but not by us. And um, let's say, if you talk about reduction of uncertainty, I'm imagining that at the beginning, there's a measure of uncertainty, and as time goes by, the measure gets closer to zero. So um, what measure of uncertainty is there at time zero? And uh, am I wrong? Uh, um, you, 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 are, you are, you know, if you would be close to us uh, some five years ago, you would be a co-author maybe to the, to the full approach, because that's, that's very exactly what, what we've been coming up to, to, to this, how, how we learn about uncertainty uh, through time and what is that measure of uncertainty. And, and, and exactly the natural way of doing it is of course to do through confidence regions. Okay. So what the, the, the whole thing is that, uh, what we are saying is that indeed we are looking at it as a, as a game and the nature picks up, uh, nature knows that uh, we are learning about uh, the, the parameter set. Uh, the way we are learning uh, about the parameter set uh, is through confidence regions, which means that uh, we construct through time the confidence regions and with high probability, we know that the true parameter is inside of those confidence regions. And okay. then nature will pick, we assume that nature picks the parameter in that set and the set uh, or the uncertainty set, this theta, bold theta, now labeled by T, will get smaller and smaller in time if the confidence regions are done in, in the right way. Okay. And, and, and the problem is still in soup, so it is adaptive and robust. Uh, so we adapt the model, the, the model uncertainty set. Uh, we still treat it as a robust, uh, namely we solve across all possible models, except that now uh, is parameter lives in the confidence regions. Uh, yeah, so these confidence regions, um, are they defined with a single probability measure or more than one? For now, just one single. So everything is uh, for now, that's, that's a very good question. So for now, think about there is a reference uh, probability measure on all other measures are absolutely continuous. 
to that probability measure. So eventually you, of course, would like to elevate things when you have more probability measures and maybe even singular to each other uh, to some extent. Like think, the, the way probably you are thinking is that the volatility in a, in a continuous framework belongs to an interval, which is not okay. part, of, uh, part of this. But in discrete time, that, that's typically not the case because all the measures are more or less absolutely continuous. It's hard to come up with measures which are singular in, in uh, so this measures, uh, there is a reference measure. So if that, that's the question, there is a reference measure P and everything is absolutely continuous with, with that P. Now, this set Q, this set Q of probability measures, so as, as Peter said, uh, we are thinking that, uh, well, instead of labeling the models uh, by, by parameter theta, the, the way you formalize it, you define also in soup uh, expectation of the losses uh, but uh, now through different probability measures, these probability measures, if we want to incorporate the confidence regions, they have to be defined uh, on the canonical space or on the space of the trajectories. It's a, it's a long construction, but uh, you'll have to, 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 to follow up a little bit of what I'm saying and trust that the construction is properly done. Okay, Please, so I'll construct. I'll construct in a second this Q, yes? Igor, so if we had one distribution, let's say we were, in, we were in continuous GBM, right? We have two parameters, drift and volatility, right? There was one density function bivariate for those two parameters, right? You could solve the problem explicitly. You could find the phi, the best strategy that maximizes whatever you, or, you know, something, right? Yeah. Okay, right. right. So you're saying we have, a, we, have a, we have a set of distributions, like two bivariate distributions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we don't know which one is the real one. Is, yeah. that, is that how you think about it? Is that right? I mean, yeah, that's 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 exactly right. So the only thing with 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 the BGM is that uh, the volatility is is sort of known once you observe one trajectory. But uh, in principle, yes, that's the that's the message that we. The only thing you know that the drift and the volatility will belong to some set, and we don't know what is true mu, and we don't know what is true sigma. Yes, and Leon, just to clarify. Yes. Um, you don't put probability mass on the mu or sigma. Uh, other, uh, you only know that, say, mu is between 5 and 20% and oh. mm -hmm. between, uh, 0 and so, so it's not the confidence region, not, not, a, um, not, a, not, a, not a bivariate density function, you mean, Peter, right? Right. So not a bivariate density function. You, you sort of like, you know the support, and that's it. OK. Um, Okay. Or but, yeah, bivariate okay. in a sense that not 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 precisely. I mean, not exactly bivariate, but bivariate in 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 on the on the space of trajectories. Then it is maybe bivariate. But uh, for now, you start at time zero, as Peter said. It's in between two numbers, the vol and the and then you learn about this somehow through the confidence region. So that, that I'll construct in a second. But uh, but we don't put a priori no. Uh, we don't know what is actually the distribution of mu and sigma. Okay, so so the the, the cartoons that I like to show when when giving this these talks, the, the the description now should be more or less clear, uh, at least in words. So that if so on t is uh, time, on uh, y axis I have my uncertainty, and if there is no uncertainty, the parameter is already fixed and picked, and uh, there is nothing to change about it. So uh, the robust uh, paradigm of uh, Hansen and Sargent and, uh, and Minmax uh, uh, is the following. So you have the time uh, and the, as you can see, this would be my set theta, bold theta. And you solve the entire problem through, through the, the entire time. And you pick up one parameter, I call it robust, uh, which is fixed uh, through, through all times. Now uh, it could be close, it could be far from true and uh, you know, it, it, it depends what you are minimizing or maximizing. Typically it's far and typically on the, overall it is on the conservative side. So the strong robust that I didn't introduce is similar except that the parameter is allowed to be changed by nature through, through time. And it's assumed that we don't learn anything about this uncertainty. So our picture uh, is the following. Uh, so the, you start with the set theta here, which is large and then you adapt it, and at time t, we are using this theta uh, bold t, which is a confidence region for the parameter theta, or a confidence interval, if you want. And we are, at each time, we'll solve, uh, solve a robust problem, which means at each time we'll pick up the wrong, I mean, the worst model, 
uh, but on the smaller and smaller set. And then if the, the parameter, I mean, if this theta t is constructed well, then that's precisely what's gonna happen. And the nature knows that we are doing that. So that would be probably, you know, the, the, the punchy, punch line description of, of our method without going into, into uh, the, the math itself. So um, now we'll move to, I'll, I'll move to, to introduce properly what is this set theta t and, you know, give you, of course, the examples. Um, so to, 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 to put more structure, I'll take a Z, my uh, uh, stochastic driver. I'll assume that this is a sequence of IID random variables, but generally speaking, could be just a Markov process. Uh, and uh, the process X, the control process is determined by deterministic function F that takes current value, current decision, future value, and spits out the, the realization. So, so sort of the value process of, the, of, a, of a portfolio, if you want. Uh, that would be, V would be the value process, Z would be the stock price fee, the, uh, the investment, uh, I mean, the trading strategy, and F is whatever the dynamics uh, we are assuming. Uh, so um, now, uh, as I said, Z has, uh, there are these uh, sets, uh, there is this set theta by which the probability law of Z is, uh, is parameterized. And as you can see here, the, the way I am defining, of course, I'm in, in, the, in the Markovian setup. So uh, here I assuming that Z are IID, but in principle could be any Markov, Markov chain. And uh, um, uh, that's, that's the, the, the general dynamics. Now, uh, I'll step a little bit uh, aside and, and make this claim here about this set. Hey, sorry, I just did. So, um, you said Z is IID, and the probability measure it's IID under is P theta. Mm -hmm. And, um, okay, so, um, and then theta is in an interval. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we know a fair bit about <laughs> the dynamics because they're IID, but we don't know the parameters. Exactly. Correct. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right, right, okay. right. And I specifically put it, uh, instead of complicated Markov chain, I put it IID because that's the way, the, it's, it's a nice way to, to think exactly like you described. So we know something and we still want to, you know, not to, 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 to use, uh, we want to be robust, but we want to be also adaptive. So, and actual numbers show that this is the right thing to do. So as I said, I mean, generally speaking, this process Z, could be a Markov chain, and then you want to construct uh, by, because it's a control uh, process, a control problem, you need to have a recurrent construction of these confidence regions or confidence interval, which are, which are th here. Uh, it, it, it's a nice little uh, statistical problem. Can you construct confidence regions or confidence intervals? And by confidence regions, I literally mean what is written here, uh, that uh, some sets such that probability the true parameter belongs to this set is equal to one minus alpha. Mm -hmm. So, but you want to construct them in a recursive way. Uh, and, and this is important because uh, without this, we'll not be able to, 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 to formulate the problem and especially to solve it numerically. And uh, the answer is uh, yes, you can. I'll show you for mean and variance at the end. Uh, generally speaking, to, it's not, it, it doesn't solve, it's not solved. It's solved in, in this paper that, uh, that we, we, we've done. Uh, it, it's a quite interesting mathematical problem itself, a statistical problem. But the answer is yes, you can actually construct uh, the, um, estimators which are consistent recursively, which means again, recursive, by recursively, I mean the previous value plus uh, the new value, a deterministic function of them speeds the new value. And then for the sets, you can do the same. So um, it's, uh, it, it's possible and, and, and also in the right way that the set, uh, the, the confidence region will converge to the true. So my picture shrinking uh, is, is actually a correct picture. Okay, so if you, uh, I mean, it, I'm not gonna discuss the, the details of this construction. It's a quite interesting uh, uh, construction, but uh, it's possible to do. Uh, for mean and variance, you don't need this paper. You can do by, by hand, and uh, I'll show you exact formulas for, for sample mean and sample variance of IID normal. Uh, you can precisely do, but it's much more general than that. Okay, once I have- uh, Excuse uh, me, uh, the, uh, the, can we say that uh, all the theta completely characterizes the moment generating function of Z? Is that, is that a valid way of, of thinking about theta? Um, 
not sure what is characterizing the, the moment generating function. So uh, mm. maybe yes. Uh, well, if you'll know theta, you'll know. But, but again, this, uh, uh, so characterizing moment generating function in, in a sense, you are thinking about method of moments or? It, it, it just fully determines the moment generating function or it just like, uh, like it determines the full, full you know, distribution of Z is this. Right, eventually it does because it converges. So uh, theta is a consistent mm -hmm. estimator, which means theta hat T will converge to true theta star, uh, which mm -hmm. means it will determine precisely. And uh, the, the only thing I want to emphasize, these are not the maximum likelihood estimator, nor any of other estimators that you'll, you, you typically know from statistics because they are not recurrent. Uh, and if you want to have them recurrent, then you have to work a little bit out. Uh, and then uh, you, it's, it's a version of approximated uh, MLEs, maximum likelihood estimators. Okay, so I'll show you again this, uh, but think about theta for now, sample mean and sample variance, and it turns out you can write them in this form and in this form. And uh, the, the confidence region would be, well, an ellipsoid, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell that for a sample mean, sample variance, uh, the confidence region is an ellipsoid. Okay, so uh, I'll have to, to move a little bit faster. So how we define this, uh, this probability measures Q uh, such that uh, we pick up uh, eventually the parameter belonging to this set uh, in the right way. And the way you do, uh, you take the process Y, which is the original state process increased and enlarged by, by, the, by the estimator. Now, since the estimator had a dynamic, which means recurrency, I had a recurrency for theta hat, then I have a recurrency for this uh, bigger set, larger, uh, larger process uh, or state space Y, uh, call it the dynamics G, the world F, the new R from, uh, from, for theta. Uh, you have the history. Now the history is augmented. History two is the X and theta. Uh, and uh, the, the, the confidence regions, of course, is, is where we learn about these parameters. Uh, now, how we incorporate that, we are as uh, right. Uh, quick question. So I know X is Markov and is Y Markov too? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, now as, as actually Peter mentioned at, at the beginning of, of, the, of the talk, it's good to look at now uh, at, at uh, this mean max problem as a game between the controller, me, and the adversary or nature. And the, the, the rules are that me, is, uh, as, as a controller, is picking uh, up the, the control phi based on the history, which means the, the original state process X, but also the estimators that I, I use uh, with uh, values in my um, uh, controls or in uh, the values of uh, admissible set A like trading strategies could be, for example, weights between zero and one. Uh, and nature also knows what I'm doing. And based on that, plays against me and picks based on the, on the histories. Now, this is the probably the critical point where we are postulating that the nature picks the uh, parameter for the next step in the confidence region at time t that we are estimating and we know the rule uh, for, for that. In contrast, what was done before, this t, uh, theta t is not even mentioned. It's fixed uh, in the robust setup and uh, strong robust versions. Uh, this set is, is assumed that we don't know anything and we don't learn uh, about the parameter, which is counterintuitive. Again, the, the, the way we've been talking about drift and volatility or mean and variance, it's impossible to, to, to if we observe something about the past, naturally we know something about the uncertainty of this, uh, of this parameter, but also where this parameter lives with high probability, uh, or, uh, which is in our sense, confidence sets. So once this is fixed and once this is set up, then uh, things okay, are- um, I have a clarifying question. So mm -hmm. nature's playing a history dependent strategy. And earlier I asked about whether Y was Markov and you said yes. So um, is nature able to, um, you know, let's say, take a worst case scenario that uses, um, you know, if I'm out of time, T uses uh, what happened more than two periods ago. Um, yep. sure. They are. Okay. Right. It's, it's history dependence on nature. And that's, that's, that's exactly 
we, we don't know. And, and, and since we don't know how nature is choosing this, uh, we, we, we just play the, the, the worst case scenario, assuming that the worst model happens, but uh, in theta t over here. Okay. Yeah. So, so now with this, uh, what, what, what typically how, how it is done, you construct, uh, once you know our, our uh, rules and nature's new rules of playing, you construct these transition uh, probability kernels or transition probabilities, uh, given the, the current state hours and, and nature state, I mean, our, our state, what would be the next value of the, the extended process. And then uh, you substitute and glue all of these uh, probabilities together uh, through all the times and the way they are constructed, we can we can go through a couple of them. So you can see you, delta x zero. It's some uh, uninformative. Uh, if you want prior at time zero, we don't know anything, and we pick randomly one parameter or fix one parameter that that we choose that doesn't matter. And then this is what nature picked. This is what we picked, assuming that this is what uh, we our our choices during the time zero is. This is the probability of what will happen next time. And if this is the case, then the next time and so on and so on. And we glue all of these probabilities together. And after you have uh, the probability, what we call Q, that phi and psi, phi is our choice. Psi is the, the, um, the, the play by the, the adversary. Uh, then this would be B0, B1, Bt is at each time uh, the value of the process or on the canonical space, okay? So uh, it, it takes a little bit of time to, to digest, but essentially this will mimic what I, what I, uh, what I described in, in the picture and that's actually correct. And now the, pr the problem is again, uh, precisely formulated in the same way. It is an inf soup with respect to the models that belong to a class of models, but the models are picked up uh, and, and designed in such a way that the nature <clears throat> is choosing them or the parameter at time t is something that belongs to this confidence region. And uh, since this is expectation of L, uh, and L is deterministic, uh, that is again a time consistent problem. And when I say time consistent problem, uh, that means nothing else but the fact that you can use the classical uh, Bellman principle of optimality. And in fact, you can prove with all of this construction at hand that the solution to this problem, <clears throat> to solution to this problem in soup, uh, can be done recurs recursively in, in backward fashion. You start from the terminal time and you solve it recursively backward, as uh, any uh, you would solve a optimal investment or by maximizing the utility. Uh, that's uh, in discrete time you can solve it directly. But again, the key problem was that, the key feature was that this is expectation of a deterministic time of the terminal wealth. <clears throat> and then that is what, uh, what uh, people will say, it's a, it's a um, uh, st strong time consistent or time consistent problem. In other words, you solve it once backward. And once you solve this, uh, this problem backward, starting from time t and um, going to t minus one, t minus one, t minus two, you are finding the optimal, uh, the optimal um, solution and the optimal strategy. And uh, which means as time afterwards, time goes back uh, forward. As time goes forward, you know, depending what happens, which strategy to use or how to make your investment if you want. And uh, if you will solve uh, because WT, WT plus one is here, if you would even restart and resolve the problem as ignoring everything and from time, any time you'll restart and solve problem again, you'll come up with the same strategy as you decided to do at time zero. And that makes the time consistency. Uh, another definition would be that uh, it satisfies uh, the solution can be written as a backward induction. Um, and, uh, and that uh, holds true. And of course, uh, right here, you can see that uh, at each time t, I'm solving an inf soup problem inf across all my possible choices at time t, which are where I can uh, pick up the, uh, the controls. And the model I know at time t, the model parameter model is uh, in the confidence uh, region. This tau uh, is meant to do the confidence region. Okay, so uh, of course we have a proof for that. Now things are becoming trickier 
when we have problems of the form expectation of a function of the terminal wealth plus a function of the expectation. Okay. These are time inconsistent, so which means there is no Bellman principle. So, and you, one can show that, for example, again, mean variance, think about this is just mean and this is the variance. Uh, the mean variance problem that I, I described initially is not time consistent, which means I'm solving for, for this phi t, c, phi t at time zero, then I solve it tomorrow and I'll have completely different uh, processes, which is optimal, which means somehow I'm changing my mind, how I act in the future. Uh, um, and uh, these are very actual hard problems to, to deal with uh, without even model uncertainty, just, just simply usual stochastic control problems. And there are attempts, uh, various type of, of ways of, of dealing with this time inconsistency. Uh, and uh, I usually like to call it not even time consistency, but uh, strong time, uh, time inconsistency because um, there are problems which are still sort of time consistent, but in, in a weaker sense. Uh, but uh, the way to do, there are four, about four approaches on, on this. One, one approach is the approach by Bjork and Murgochi, where from, uh, it's called the theory of Markov, uh, Markovian time inconsistent stochastic control problems in discrete time. As you can see, it's relatively recent. So uh, it's 2014. Uh, with no model uncertainty, just simple as it is. Uh, and the way it, uh, you work it out, Philosophically, you play not against the nature, but you are playing against the copy of yourself. In other words, you are making like, you are forcing this problem to be time consistent. Uh, technically, this, this becomes tricky, but that's uh, a way to, to do. And if I'm not wrong, uh, last week, I believe Agostino gave a talk on robo-advising. So that he, he also had uh, in that uh, approach, had a stochastic control problem which was also time inconsistent, and he also used Bjork and Murugochi, and that was the reason I was asking actually for the talk. So, so that's a way to go, and um, I'll cut it a little bit shorter here, uh, just saying that uh, indeed we are working with, uh, with what is called sub-game perfect strategies. And sub-game perfect strategies, as you can see here, is that if I solve the problem today, which means I'm picking phi tilde t, c tilde t. This is the same as to solve it, use the solution that I'll have tomorrow, which is phi t plus one, c t plus one, and solve it again for one period of time, I'll get to the same result. So um, that's, it's, it's written here. And once we fix this, that will not solve the original problem, but uh, it would be close to, 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 to have a solution to this problem. And uh, the, the name is uh, that you are reformulating in, in so-called sub-game perfect uh, control uh, setup. Uh, and then uh, on the other hand, uh, I can say that you are literally enforcing within reasonable uh, framework, you are enforcing the Bellman principle to hold true. And once everything is, is done properly, it's still not easy to, to, to prove, but then, yeah, we can show that we have, we have this, uh, this recurrency uh, backward. And that, that's critically important. Uh, without this, there is no chance to solve numerically this, uh, the, the entire problem for, I don't know, uh, 100 days or 250 days. Uh, but now, you, instead of solving a big problem for all periods of time, you solve it period by period. And solving period by period is the same as to solve the entire problem, as uh, usually the dynamic programming principle uh, says. And uh, the, the theorem says that, yes, indeed, uh, you, can, uh, you can do that even for time inconsistent problem in the suboptimal um, uh, framework. Uh, there are some additional assumptions on, on, on that I'm skipping. Uh, and, uh, uh, as in particular, for example, you can see maximum here. We are assuming A is finite. We still don't know how to, how to deal with a, a general, general set A. Uh, even the compact one doesn't work. Uh, uh, then we also have some other assumption of course, continuity measurability that uh, allow to have that uh, this strategy exist and, is, uh, and uh, satisfies this. We also show, which is actually quite not trivial to show the existence of this sub, uh, 
subgame per perfect strategy, which means the existence, uh, the existence of uh, optimal selector. But uh, all in all, the theory it, it, it's solid for and it's valid for for mean variance at least. Uh, problem. So now I believe I have about like five minutes uh, left. Uh, I'll wrap it up with this example that we I, I was uh, uh, mentioning at the beginning. It's a mean variance uh, criteria. So I'll have one risky asset uh, and uh, or a, a risk free banking account. I'll invest optimally according to the mean variance criterion in these two assets. Uh, I'll assume the, the simplest setup, uh, but yet not trivial setup, that my log returns of the risk asset is normally distributed. And the distribution is Z, so Z are the, the log returns. It has unknown mean, unknown variance. So mean and variance belong, the only thing that I know is that mean belongs to let's say, to, to an interval mu bar, mu bar, and sigma belongs to another interval, let's say, under bar, top bar. And I know what is uh, this, uh, this, this bound, so 5%, uh, 10%, uh, uh, between 5 and 20%, and maybe volatility or sigma would be between uh, 5 and 40%, or 10 and 40%, whatever we choose, large or small, depends how much uncertainty we want to put a priori on, uh, on the model. Uh, the dynamics is, uh, is, uh, is written uh, clearly, self-financing condition will come into the place. Uh, and then uh, the question is, uh, one question that, that may, may, may come is why mean variance? I mean, well, the reason for mean variance is not because uh, it's the simplest, actually it's the most used criteria, practically speaking. So, uh, and it's yet uh, the simplest problem, uh, which is time inconsistent that can be solved. So, um, uh, we solve it, uh, and uh, here is the answer to the question of uh, the confidence regions. So the, the um, estimator is sample mean and sample variance. So again, mu and sigma is the mean and variance, uh, mu and standard deviation of the normally distributed random variable. The estimators are uh, sample mean and sample variance. The recurrence is here. For, for the mean is easy, so this is of course the previous estimation plus one over uh, t plus one, z t plus one. For the variance is a little bit longer, but together they are recurrent. So it's the previous value gives me the next value. The um, confidence region is an ellipsoid as a pair. You, and it's an ellipsoid because of the central limit theorem. Uh, so again, the statistics 101, if the mean and variance or standard deviation of a normally distributed regular is both are unknown, we know how, uh, how uh, that we have to use uh, uh, the, the chi-square distribution to test uh, and to, to build the confidence regions. And the confidence region is an ellipsoid. The interesting part is that this ellipsoid is also uh, computed recurrently. And the recurrency is done well because uh, the, hat, uh, the, the estimators are recurrent, then the ellipsoids are also recurrent. And uh, we have um, the full formula. So for this, there is no need for general theory, but actually this is true in general. Now the dynamics are whatever they are, you, glued, you put them all together, it's a complicated long formula. Uh, the Bellman equations are even longer. I'm not writing them, uh, but I, I had them a couple of slides back. Uh, the results are the following. So we take a particular um, set of parameters. So I believe uh, the interest rate, 52 is because it's 52 weeks. So everything is on weekly. Uh, why not daily? We are still in the, in the mode of uh, making our code, our actual numerical uh, part to work for, for a long time. So it takes a lo long time. I want to, 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 to mention to, that um, this type of inf sub problem uh, or max inf problem, max, uh, max mean or min max doesn't matter. They are numerically challenging to solve. And uh, hey, Igor, because, uh, yeah. yes. Sorry to interrupt, but um, could you describe how nature is now picking sort of like the worst history um, and that you're, you know, and then how you're countering that? I'm trying to do it, understand it in this context. Is my question clear? Mm, so, so how, how nature picks somehow, we, we don't know. 
and uh, it's in a sense irrelevant for us what we know that the nature picks it you know. yeah but let's say we're doing okay we're we're our control is how much to invest in the risky asset right mm -hmm. and um i guess the worst thing that nature can do is to make the mean be really that low and to make the variance be really high i suppose if correct. we're long if we're long correct um correct yeah i'm thinking we're long but it's i always, guess i don't know that that's correct okay. so that that would be really really bad to know if nature does that and we are exactly trying to avoid that by saying that okay uh, that that means according to my criteria i'll try i'll try to take this minimum at time t to to to, to minimize somehow uh, my uh, my uh, expected uh, you know mean variance criteria uh, across all models the only thing i know that the nature knows what i'm doing and picks the 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 parameter within the set theta t yeah so i i know you made that assumption very clear and um so like as we're moving through time and theta, I think like you had that nice picture where theta T yep. is kind of a narrowing cone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, your, you know, your assumption, which is very explicit right there, is that, yeah, this is great. So let, let's say we're at this time T that you circled. Mm -hmm. Nature is picking a, a history up to this time that is in the yellow um confidence region mm -hmm. interval right yeah yeah and okay so i mean in the particular content i know you have only like in this diagram you have one theta you know which i understand correct completely. correct yeah but it's it, one dimensional it, yeah. yeah it's one dimensional which, of course um so so since it's one dimensional i mean let's just say that you know maybe it's just the mean that i just want to talk in the context of this diagram so maybe it's just the mean that we don't know and let's say we actually know the standard deviation, just so I can talk about one unknown, let's be consistent with this diagram. So then nature would pick the, the, the lowest, I mean, I'm thinking nature would pick for the mean, the lowest allowed um, mean. I'm thinking we're wrong right. asset. So it would right. be like the lower, the yeah. lower boundary of this yellow cone. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Nature can do, I mean, and, 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 well, if this is the mean, we'll, we'll sort of minimize and think, and according to our criteria, well, mean variance is, variance is fixed, then we, we, we minimize or maximize with respect to, I mean, we'll pick up maybe mean, uh, we'll, we'll also think that this is the worst case scenario that can happen, and actually we'll pick that one too. If nature picks another mean somewhere here, we, if that is the mean, we'll think that this is our problem, we'll pick up and, and show because we are optimizing and say, well, the worst possible model, we don't know what nature picked, but we'll minimize and if that is the mean, I'll think the worst what can happen is the, the, the smallest mean and you're right. Right, okay, that was very helpful, thank you. Yep, yep. Sure, um, like this. Yeah, yeah, tell you one. Question, yes, yes, uh, question. So um, you talked in the beginning intuitively what timing consistent means, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're using this function capital R, like you showed the example in the, with the, um, you know, the, the log normal, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if, you, if R enables you to update the point estimate of theta, once you observe the next increment of Z, I guess, right? The increment of Z is observed, ZT plus one, and you, right. and you update the uh, point estimate. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're doing, does, does that clearly mean that it must be a time consistent because you're constantly confronting each new t a new range of values for the thetas, right? Right. So, 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 so that that bit is time consistent. What is time inconsistent is my decision. So my decision is this fee. So 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 and, and again this time consistency. As I said, I mean the way you are thinking and I'm thinking is my decisions are still time consistent. Unfortunately, unfortunately. For people from stochastic control, time consistency has a very, very clear definition. Mathematically means not what we are economically would think. Uh, mathematically means that this theorem holds true. And that's it. So that, that, uh, that means that my decisions, actually this fees that I'm computing, uh, maybe, yeah, phi, uh, phi t tilde, if I compute them at time zero, and I get, I, and I'm getting this entire process, which which depends on the state too. And then if I would compute them at time, let's say s, which is bigger than t, I get the same thing. Be, they have to be the same thing. 
Right, right. Okay. Yeah. And in 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 in, uh, in this mean variance, unfortunately, they are not. And uh, because primarily because the variance, you know, uh, variance is uh, is uh, the the linearity is is lost and it's square of the expectation rather than expectation of a square. And then essentially that, uh, if you want Jensen inequality somewhere is screwing up things. So even though even though you're up you're, you're up to, every time new t you're updating the range of possible yep. values. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Of, of, yep. of theta, uh, right? Uh, the range, the dynamics is the dynamics is good for 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 the state process. The dynamics for the for the set is good, but the criterion itself is bad. The criterion because it's expectation minus variance is bad. Now, what happens actually is it is still time consistent, but in in a different uh, language. It's uh, what we are saying in uh, in in our not this paper, but in, 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 in other, another discussion, more of a, of a way of thinking. Uh, financially means that I'm making maybe not worse decision, but maybe slightly, slightly more risk averse decision in the, in the future, which means I'm improving my decisions. That makes me also time consistent. I'm kind of becoming smarter as time goes. Uh, that is not allowed in this setup. So, uh, so and, and, and as I said, it's uh, X is time consistent, uh, sort of uh, my my Q is time consistent, but the criterion is m what makes things not to 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 square. And mathematically, as I said, here is expectation of X. Here is uh, is uh, uh, is uh, expectation square. And then it's, uh, it's simply when you start writing the dynamics, it, it doesn't square. So um, uh, we pick up uh, uh, what I wanted to, to to mention that actually solving this numerically these problems. Even step by step is challenging. Uh, on the first paper, when time consistent, we did. It was not easy. Uh, we did only one dimensional case, two dimensional case in very limited number of steps. Then uh, Tao actually did a machine learning approach uh, to, to, to solve this in a smart way. And then we adapted it to, to this time inconsistent setup. So uh, the numbers I'm, I'm taking is initial value is 100%, uh, sorry, $100. I'll have two, two, two sets uh, of uh, risk uh, aversion parameter 0.2 and 0.9. The value is 52 is because 52 weeks. Uh, mu star, sigma star is given by these two numbers. Uh, they are on a week weekly basis. Uh, we, can, uh, we can convert them to, to, to yearly if it's easier, but it's less relevant, uh, at least for now. Mu bar, this is where I believe my set is. So overall, that is a, that is a rectangle. And um, for mu and sigma, and we run our process. So this is how uh, actually these confidence regions uh, look like. Uh, you may not see, but maybe you can see. So it's the square is uh, this rectangle. Of course, the confidence region at time t, as I said, is an ellipsoid. So you have to intersect with your support where you believe the parameters live a priori. So uh, it, it decays. It, 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 it becomes smaller. It, this is an ellipsoid at some parts. Maybe it's less visible, but numerically you can clearly see that uh, this is a shrinking ellipsoid intersected with uh, the, 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 the rectangles where you know, the support is. And uh, this is at 10%. Uh, we take confidence regions at 10%. Uh, the true parameter, which is the true true model parameter, is in the middle. I mean, this solid line, this. Um, Dots are the estimators um, that, uh, in this case, coincide with MLEs, and that's uh, the almost uh, the end. Uh, this is the so I'm running really uh, over time. But you had good questions, so I didn't expect that uh, an online uh, seminar could be so engaging. So thank you, <laughs> you yeah. made uh, you made my day today. So uh -huh. uh, the adaptive robust is our uh, result. Uh, strong robust is the classical one. Uh, the mean is the same. What, what matters is, of course, we try to minimize the variance. And our strategy, as you can see, significantly gives smaller variance, like really significant. All other statistics are the same, but uh, the variance, what, what pops up. And, and, and we checked uh, on various set of parameters, and we, we are getting the same. That would be my last slide. We're before yeah, um, so just about the last slide um, before this. So. Um, the variance is smaller, and that's because you're using um, an adaptive approach, which um, you take into account the realizations mm -hmm. of the price. Correct. And um, let's say update the confidence interval 
based on the observed price. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. And so the, the variance you're calculating is the variance of wealth when you're pursuing a strategy? Is, is that the second row here? Mm, the variance of, uh, yeah, this is the variance of the terminal wealth. X yeah. is the wealth. Okay. Right? V is okay. the value function that would be, you know, the mean minus uh, minus variance. So, uh, well, mean minus gamma times variance. Uh, but uh, the first row is, I mean, X is the terminal wealth. Should be W actually in the paper is W, but uh, I wanted to keep the same notation. To, okay, okay. Uh, things, so. And this is the histogram. Uh, the, the dark one is adaptive robust is our. Uh, realization again of the terminal wealth. As you can see, I didn't adapt, uh, didn't change the picture. So it's WT as in the paper, uh, but um, that's the realization of the terminal wealth. And uh, the, the light uh, gray is the, um, is the um, strong robust, which is a version of robust. And uh, I believe uh, I can conclude, but the conclusion uh, are clear. We have a new framework that re reduces the uncertainty can be applied generally speaking, to many problems. We are still very excited about it, working on it. And I really thank you for the, for the <laughs> seminar. It was, it was lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yes, it was lovely. I agree. Um, all right, let's um, open it up. I mean, um, if anybody would like to ask a question of, this, of Igor, um, feel free to chime in. Um, yeah, uh, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead, Ravon. Uh, yeah, so I think that if in nature, uh, you know, the thetas have some kind of time, uh, time dynamics and some kind of like non-stationary, even if it's uh, like a, a more gradual one, then uh, w would it be still be true that the a AR will uh, have uh, lower variance and uh, will, will be like, uh, will, will be actually better than the, the classical result? So in these numbers, so what? So yes, to, yes, correct. Comparative to, to uh, again, I, I think I missed the, the, the main point of the question. So if the nature will have what? If it has like, if the thetas are have uh, non-trivial time dynamics, so say they're like uh, non-stationary, right? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, I, right. I, I would think that the classical- so, Yeah, so, uh, well, that's, that's a hard question. Um, that's, uh, the answer is I don't know. So what we are saying now that actually the, the X and theta are processes themselves. Uh, and then uh, tentatively, yes, uh, that is not a finite dimensional uh, setup. That would be infinite dimensional setup. Uh, and uh, we, it's a matter of, uh, you know, I, I believe it's still the answer is the same as long as uh, some stationarity or some reasonable assumptions are made on these parameters. Uh, but the problem itself is not yet in our framework. So we, we, we are clearly still in mathematically speaking in the, in the finite dimensional setup. And, and the reason is uh, uh, it's more related to simple questions like why this min max problem that makes sense and why this uh, it's ever exists a control which is measurable and and uh, at the moment you ask this, what I put it under the rug here, uh, existence of sub uh, game perfect strategy, it's uh, non-trivial topological questions because you are playing with, uh, and, and, and in fact, I can tell you for, for this, uh, uh, problems which are not time, uh, time consistent. We had to use uh, semi-analytical uh, functions, uh, weak topologies uh, on, on set of uh, uh, semi-analytical functions. So it, it became nastier than even I wish. So. Uh. <laughs> okay, um, I have a question. So yes, um, the table you just showed us in the very last slide, can we go back to it? This one, yes. Um, this was computed using 52 weeks, you told us. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just wondering what the second row in particular would look like if um, we change 52 to infinity. <laughs> so in other words, if we just kept um, learning and learning and learning, I assume the variance in the AR column would go to zero? Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's what I probably well, what, probably yes probably you are right. Okay, because well that's what I understood from um, a much earlier slide. Um, it was a picture you showed where 
um, mm. it just um, kept narrowing the cone. Um, and I Correct. Collapsed so, so the only thing I know for sure that, that the confidence region, this, this whole ellipsoid will shrink to this one dot. That, yeah. Okay. That, uh, and, and then let's say, so that means at the end of like but, after an infinite amount of yeah, But I'll time. still have, uh, have some uncertainty in my, in my, my, my wealth at the end. So variance oh, okay. being zero, uh, that means okay, I don't know what the parameters are. Okay. Uh, okay. I understand. So you, right. So at the end of infinite amount of time, let's say, you know what mu and sigma are, is what you're saying. Right. But sigma is still positive, let's say, and you're long a risky asset. <laughs> okay. And um, so you'll still have variance of your wealth. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we can think maybe in, in, in a different context. So let's say infinite horizon uh, optimization, yeah. infinite horizon. So, well, if uh, the, the, we have a stationary process, then of course I'll converge to the stationary distribution. Uh, then, uh, yeah, if it's a singleton, then there is no variance, there is nothing. If it's still uh, a stationary distribution, which means uh, it'll converge to, to the invariant measure, then uh, I'll still have variance. So that, that would be... Okay what I would think and visualize how-, how Okay, thank work, you. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, so the, the X of T's you're showing here, their wealth at 52 weeks, and let's say in the AR column, those numbers are based on doing, um, let's say the, the sort of robust strategy, like nature picking the worst possible thing you know, while uh, that's allowed for nature, you know, mm -hmm. while we learn, let's say, as we move through time, um, more about where the, if via narrower confidence intervals, what, where the mean and variance are. Is that a fair summary? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would say yes. Okay. Okay. And then the gamma was the risk return was the, um, more precisely, the mean variance trade-off. Right. Yeah, um, correct. So this is this gamma. Yeah, that gamma. This so the bigger the... is gamma, the more risk averse. The, the more penalized on the on the variance, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Precisely, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so now that I appreciate that, would you mind going to that last slide again? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Okay, right. So as we go from gamma 0.2 to gamma 0.9, we're penalizing right. variance more and yeah. You get a a lower variance. It's yeah, because I'm I'm not allowing I'm I'm sort of more risk averse since I don't like big variance, so variance would be smaller. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because this is the variance of your optimal. Correct. Your, Correct. Correct. Makes sense. So this okay. is variance of x of t. So it, yeah, it's that makes perfect sense. sense. Okay, so that's a sanity check that works. <laughs> yeah, that's that's good. I mean, we, we did these sanity checks, many of them. Okay. This one I don't remember that uh, that we thought about, you know, checking this one. But we, we had quite a few of them, and uh, as okay. I said, every single run it, it takes. Still, even now with this machine learning, uh, which is uh, sort of. Uh, uh, Gaussian process surrogates uh, Tao was using uh, in their paper uh, uh, and, and it still takes time but we can deal now with uh, two and three dimensions easily and uh, that's and, and, and any 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 utility function or invariance not necessarily uh, some something very specific so um, all right okay Igor, well, just, uh, one more question but Igor Where what should... comes to mind in relation to your last example whatever let's say if I sell a call option on a stock that I believe it has discrete geometric evolution, right? And my fee is the hedge ratio. How many shares I should be long against have being short one call, right? So, I mean, will this lead you to getting the, the, the Black Shoals Delta, you know what I mean? Like, oh, so, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's an excellent question. So the answer is, I don't know. We didn't check, unfortunately. Uh, that's where we started, as I said. That's pretty much how we've been starting uh, looking at uh, basket of uh, of uh, CDSs and try to you know to pick up the right model and then the, the minimize it by minimizing the hedging error when I don't know the model. Uh, then we diverse it and we start building up the whole theory. Uh, we didn't check that uh, maybe in the future, maybe, but that's that's definitely a question to to ask. I think Tao did in 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 their paper on numerical. Um, 
uh, in this, uh, as you can see, that the, the title is hedging. I'm not sure, uh, they, they did a hedging problem. I don't remember exactly what model they used, but uh, I would expect yes. I would expect something very, very close to, to the Delta hedging, but uh, I don't know. We didn't check. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, let's, um, let's say you can uh, applaud the speaker using Zoom, using the reactions button on the lower right. And uh, so, yeah, so. Um, Aha, anyway, so yeah. <laughs> that. So, okay, okay. So for, for our Siam, uh, so for our Siam a series of talks that we've been working on, we can borrow this idea. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, we'd yeah. Like to... Okay, right. What, actually, like the people listening to your talk might be interested in the Siam talks too. So, can you just give a quick description of what those are? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so as, as Peter said, I'm part of actually with together with Stefan uh, Sturm, who is visiting you, and Birgit and uh, Agustino, uh, who gave last uh, seminar. So, the officers of the Siam Activity Group uh, on financial mathematics and engineering. So, we started a series of virtual talks because, uh, as uh, as all of us are now stuck at home, uh, essentially online uh, seminars uh, given by people from, from the community, from mathematical finance community. The talks are happening every other Thursday at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, New York time. Uh, the registration comes from the Siam mailing list, but we are also distributing it through Bachelor of uh, Finance Society list and the private emails that are going around. If anybody is interesting, of course, email me and I'll uh, give you the link. Uh, but also, we have now a web page associated to this series where you can find uh, the information and how to register and who is the speaker. I can tell you the next speaker who is. The next speaker is Bruno uh, Dupier. Oh, nice, okay. Talk, talking about uh, a very fancy title. Uh, I, I received it today, so, but yeah, it would be on March 14, uh, and it would be Bruno speaking. And uh, I can even Sorry. tell you, you'll be the first Next ones. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be even the first ones who will know that on uh, on uh, on um, uh, sorry May on the May twenty eighth, uh, which is next next talk, we'll have actually a panel on uh, energy markets. So uh, that would be fun. We have people from both sides in this. Oh, are you saying Bruno's giving a talk May fourteen? Yes. Oh, geez. Okay, I'm actually giving one the same day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. All right. That's funny. <clears throat> yeah. Wait, yeah, I you the link in chat. You said one o'clock, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So all right. I just posted the link in chat. You can all get it there. Oh, thank you, Stefan. Uh huh. Uh, oh yeah. I was, I was thinking to do the yeah. same, but uh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's in the chat. I think you know. Stefan, you thank it. you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, Igor. That was really nice. Uh, so um, you did a great job controlling the amount of time in your talk too. I guess that was uh, robust uh, adaptive control. Uh, we did our best of nature to, to slow you down, but we didn't succeed. So your strategy worked. And um, so um, this is um, the conclusion of the BQE seminar for this uh, spring. We'll resume again in the fall. Uh, if you're hungry for, for talks, I encourage you to do the Siam talks that are every Thursday. Well, that are Thursdays at one. I guess they alternate with the Bachelier ones. Is that right? That's correct. And, and yeah. we have the same time. I mean, they have the same time, yeah. Yeah. So I suppose next Thursday, um, May 7th, there's going to be a Bachelier talk um, and let's say probably the same website as well <laughs> as this one will will tell us about it. Okay, so it looks like we can continue with Thursday seminars just at one o'clock instead of six. All right, terrific. Thanks everyone and uh, thank you. be safe. Okay. Thanks bye -bye. a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Peter. Bye. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.